Hey everyone, I'm so glad that you could join me today in my home. My name is Drew, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a sixth grade math teacher at Salmon Bay K-8 school, and at my school, everyone uses first names, so all my students call me Drew. But if it's a little weird for you to think of a teacher by their first name, you can also think of me as Mr. McDonald. Today, we're gonna be reviewing some really important concepts in the topic on rational numbers for sixth graders. This is topic two in your Envision workbook. But before we dive into that, I'm really thirsty. Oh no, my cranberry juice. I'm almost out. I have almost none left. I like to have a glass every single day. I wasn't even able to fill up the glass all the way. I guess I'll have to buy some more. Hmm. If I like to have a full glass every single day, and I want enough juice to last for two weeks, about how many bottles do you think I'm gonna need to buy? Hmm. Well, for now I'll just enjoy my juice, and at the end of the episode, let's find out how many bottles I'll need to buy. You know, negative numbers, they're a funny thing. I can count things all around me. There's seven bagels in this bag. Actually, six and a half, because I see half of one is gone. I have ten fingers. One glass of juice. All these things I can count around me, but I can't count negative numbers. I don't see anything negative around me. So, where do we find negative numbers? Well, funnily enough, they actually are all around us in the world, but we just can't necessarily count them. You know, one of my favorite things to do is play games. Do you like to play games? Well. We're in luck, because I've got a few friends who are playing a game right now that involves some negative numbers. Let's go see what they're up to. I love all kinds of games. Strategy games, party games, sports. And you know what? Often these games do involve negative numbers. Here are two of my best friends. This is Jeffrey, the guinea pig, and this is Frida, the famous artist. They're just about to play this game called Patchwork. This is such a fun game where you spend buttons and time to put patchwork pieces on your quilt. Now, this game has some really funny scoring in it. For every button you get at the end of the game, you get plus one point. But for every empty space you have at the end of the game, you get negative two points. Those negative points can really hurt you, and sometimes you might even finish the game with a negative score. Well, let's let Jeffrey and Frida play, and let's see who wins. Oh wow, Frida and Jeffrey just really played a riveting game of patchwork. Let's count up how many buttons and empty spaces they both have to find out who won. Let's start with Frida. Can you count how many buttons and empty spaces Frida has? Let's see, Frida has one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen buttons. Let's write that down. And she also has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 empty spaces. Way to go, Frida. All right, let's see what Jeffrey got. How you doing, Jeffrey? Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 buttons. Hmm, not quite as many as Frida, but the empty spaces make a big difference too. Let's see how many empty spaces he got. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve empty spaces. Can you work out their final scores? Remember, every button is worth one point, and every empty space is worth negative two points. I'll give you a moment to see if you can work out their final scores.
I'm going to use some number lines to help me figure out how many points Frida got and how many points Jeffrey got. Number lines are incredibly helpful when we're thinking of negative numbers. Zero is right in the middle of all the positive and the negative numbers. To the right of zero, we've got those positive numbers. Those you've been familiar with for a really long time. And then to the left of zero, we've got those negative numbers. Those things that we can't count, but hey, they're still really useful for us in daily life. So let's see if we can work out how many points they got. Let's start with Frida. So Frida had 16 buttons. Remember, every button is worth one point. So I'm going to go ahead and put Frida here on 16. But she did have 10 empty spaces, and every empty space is negative two points. So we are going to have to go back. I'm going to do jumps of two, of negative two, I should say, until I find out how many points she got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What number did I land on? Hmm, let's see. Here's zero. If I'm counting down from zero, we've got negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So Frida got negative four points. That might not seem like a good score, but in patchwork, it's actually pretty good. Now let's go to Jeffrey. Jeffrey got 11 buttons. Remember, that's all worth one point. So I'm going to go ahead and mark 11 on the number line. And now I need to go down 12 empty spaces. That's negative two for every empty space. Can you think, what's Jeffrey's score going to be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What number did I end up on? Well, here's negative ten, and I need to count down from negative ten. Negative 11, negative 12, negative 13. I could have also gone to negative 15 and counted up. Negative 15, negative 14, negative 13. Either way, Jeffrey finished with negative 13 points. So who won the game? Hmm, which is bigger, negative 4 or negative 13? Well, I know 13 is bigger than 4, but is negative 13 bigger than negative 4? What do you think? I decided to make a bigger number line to help me see who won. So we can see here, both Frida and Jeffrey have negative scores, because they're both to the left of 0. Frida got negative 4, Jeffrey got negative 13. When we're looking at a number line, we need to remember that numbers going further to the left are going to be smaller. Farther to the right are going to be larger. Who's further to the left and who's further to the right? Well, I can see here that Jeffrey is to the left of Frida. And Frida is to the right of Jeffrey. So Frida must have a higher score. We could write this mathematically by saying negative 4 is greater than negative 13. We could also flip that around and say negative 13 is less than negative 4. In this game, the highest score wins. So Frida is the winner. Everybody give Frida a round of applause. Better luck next time, Jeffrey. You were a good sport, though. Another game that I love that involves negative numbers is called Dominion. I've been playing Dominion with friends online a lot since I've been stuck at home so much. Well, 
Dominion's another game where you might end up with a negative score. You see, there's this really nasty card called the Witch. And if you see what happens, at the bottom it says, each other player gains a curse card. Now you might be wondering, what's a curse card? Well, the curse card is this one. And you'll notice it gives you negative one points. Sometimes you can play a game of Dominion where everyone just collects loads of witches and keeps giving each other curse cards. It can be really hard to finish with a positive score when that happens. Well, Frida and Jeffrey are about to play again, but since you can play this game with four players, they invited a few friends along. Can of chickpeas and banana gift. Let's see what happens when they play Dominion. Well, the game's over and the results are in. Let's see what happened. Frida finished with negative two points. Jeffrey finished with negative seven points. Can of Chickpeas finished with zero points. And Banana Gift finished with negative six points. Who won? Who came in second? Who came in third? Who came in fourth? This is the kind of game where you want more points. So the one with the most points is the winner. Hmm. Well, let's find out. Frida got negative two points, so I'm going to put her at negative two. Jeffrey got negative seven points, so I'm going to put him at negative seven. Negative five, negative six, negative seven. Chickpeas got zero points. <laughs> Luckily, that one's easy to find. Finally, Banana Gift got negative six points. Hmm, here's negative five, negative six. Well, just like we did before, we can just look at which numbers are further to the left to find out who got the smaller scores, and which numbers are further to the right to find out who got the larger score. Looking at the number line, I see that Jeffrey is furthest to the left. <laughs> Poor Jeffrey, it's just not his day, is it? So that means Jeffrey came in fourth place. I then see that Banana Gift is at negative six points. So Banana Gift must have come in third place. Going to the right, I next come to Frida. Frida got negative two points. Hmm. Well, she may have won Patchwork, but she didn't quite win Dominion, although second place is still very respectable. And then finally, we see Chickpeas with zero points is furthest to the right, so that means Chickpeas is our champion of Dominion. Isn't that crazy that you could win a game with zero points? Well, when you have negative numbers, sometimes that's what happens. If we wanted to write this mathematically as an inequality, we could. We could say negative seven is less than negative six, which is less than negative two, which is less than zero. That's a mathematical way to put them in order. Just like before, you could reverse them as well. Zero is greater than negative two, is greater than negative six, is greater than negative seven. Now, so far, all the numbers that we've been dealing with have been integers. Hmm. What are integers, you might ask? Well, now so far, all the numbers that we've been dealing with have been integers. What's an integer, you might ask? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm having a hard time remembering myself. Oh, I have an excellent idea. Let's look it up in our Envision Workbook Glossary. Ah, here we go. Integers. Integers are the set of positive whole numbers, their opposites, and zero. So you can see on the number line here, these are all integers. Now, I just saw another word in there, opposites. Hmm, what are opposites? Is it like hot and cold, day and night? Hmm, I don't think it's quite the same for numbers. So let's have a look. Opposites, opposites, opposites. Ah, there we go. 
Opposites are two numbers that are the same distance from zero on a number line and in opposite directions. So for example, 17 and negative 17 are opposites. Let's see how that works. Hmm, well here's 17 and here is negative 17. They are both the same distance from zero. They're both 17 units. What's that, Jeffrey? There's a word for a number's distance from zero? Hmm, do you remember that word? I think it's something like absolutely fabulous. Oh, no, not absolutely fabulous, that's me. <laughs> absolute value, that's what we call that. A number's distance from zero is its absolute value. And we write it like this. The absolute value of negative 17 is 17 because it's 17 units from zero. And the absolute value of positive 17 is also 17 because it's also 17 units from zero. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey, for reminding me that there's that important word for us to remember. But aren't there other numbers other than just integers? Surely these can't be all the numbers. What's that, Frida? That's right, there are rational numbers. In fact, there's an infinite amount of rational numbers. They're all between these integers. And actually, the integers themselves are also rational numbers. Rational numbers are just any number that you could write as a fraction. So for example, let's see, 2 thirds. That's rational. 7 and 1 eighth. I know I could write that as a fraction as well. It's 57 eighths. What about decimal numbers? Hmm, 7 tenths. Yeah, I could write that as a fraction. What about those integers? Five, could I write five as a fraction? What's that chickpeas? Ah, you're right, I could. I could write it as five over one, 10 over one, 15 over one. I could even write it as 30 over two if I wanted to. So rational numbers are just all those numbers that you could write as a fraction. What about those negative rational numbers? How do we put those in order? That can be a little bit tricky. <gasps> Let's have a look at Jeffrey's lunch account statement to find out. We're gonna look at Jeffrey's school account to help us understand more about rational numbers, and in particular, how we can order rational numbers. First, let's make sure we can all read the account. You'll see in the first column, we have the different items. Now, you might not be sure what a deposit is, that's just when you add money into your account. That's why that $10 is a credit. A credit is money going into your account. That's then money that you can use to purchase things you need. For Jeffrey, those are things like his breakfast and his lunch. <sighs> and unfortunately, he also has some overdue library books of guinea pigs and men and Island of the Blue Guinea Pigs. <sighs> you can see all of those items come out as debits. Debits are amount that are coming out of your account. Why do you think that they're negative? That's right. It's because if it's money going out of your account, it's going to make your account total go down. What is your account total, you might ask? Well, we call that a balance. That's why Jeffrey started with $10 after his deposit, but then his balance kept going down and down and down, and now his balance is actually negative. Do you know what the word is when you have a negative balance? <laughs> That's right, Jeffrey. That means you're in debt. Sorry, buddy, but all it will take is another deposit to get you out of debt. Now let's look at all these debits and credits. Hmm, which debits and credits were the biggest? Which were the smallest? Which made the biggest change in Jeffrey's account? Well, let's go to the whiteboard to find out. Now we're gonna help Jeffrey order the credits and debits in his lunch account from least to greatest so that he can understand more about what his lunch account means and how the different amounts are affecting his balance. I have the amounts listed here. $10, negative $2.25, negative $3.25, negative $5, and negative $3.75. Let's start with the greatest, $10. 
which of those would be the greatest? Hmm. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to tell because there's only one positive number up there. So $10 is definitely going to be the greatest. What about the least? Which of those negative numbers is going to be furthest to the left? Hmm. Well, it looks like negative 5 is going to be further to the left. Because regardless of how many cents these have, negative 5 is less than negative 2 or negative 3. Now is where things start to get a little trickier. I can see that next in order is going to be negative $3.25 and negative $3.75. But I'm not quite sure which order to put them in. What's that, Jeffrey? I should think about their opposites to help me. What a great idea. Remember, opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero, but in opposite directions. So let's see. What would be the opposite of negative $3.25? Hmm. Must be positive $3.25. What would be the opposite of negative $3.75? Must be positive $3.75. If I were to locate those two numbers on a number line, which would be lower? Which would be higher? Hmm. Well, it looks like $3.25 would be lower than $3.75. I would definitely prefer the 75 cents over the 25 cents. One, two, three. So 25 cents will be about here. 75 cents will be about there. So if $3.25 is closer to zero, that must mean its opposite, negative $3.25, must also be closer to zero. Therefore, negative $3.75 is a smaller amount than negative $3.25. It can be tricky to think about that, but if we order their opposites and then just reverse them for the negative numbers, we'll always get the right order. That leaves negative $2.25. That must be the second largest amount. Hmm. But we can't sometimes just talk about the smallest number or the greatest number. We might talk about which numbers have the greatest effect on Jeffrey's lunch account. Well, for that, we're thinking absolute value. Which numbers are furthest from zero? Well, it looks like that deposit had the greatest effect because it's definitely further from zero. And then the next greatest effect was one of those overdue books, negative $5. And then next, negative $3.75, negative $3.25, and negative $2.25. Notice how when we order the numbers on a number line, they have one order, but then when we order the numbers based on how much they affected his account, they have a different order. That's why it's really important when we're dealing with negative numbers to be really clear about what we're talking about. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for one last game. Jeffrey and I are going to play Battleships. Battleships is one of my favorite games, and it actually involves negative numbers as well. In the game, you play seven ships secretly so that the other player can't see it. And then you try to guess where their ships are by reading out coordinates. Now remember, it's really important that you read the coordinates correctly and that you understand what your opponent is saying. When we read coordinates, the X coordinate always comes first. That's how far left and right you go on the X axis. The Y coordinate always comes second. That's how far up and down you go on the Y axis. So for example, if I were looking at this point right here, I would read that as negative 2, negative 4, because I'm going 2 to the left and then 4 down. If Jeffrey guesses negative 2, negative 4, he's going to hit my ship. And then if he keeps guessing these other ones, he might sink my ship. Whew. Luckily, he doesn't know where I am because this Envision workbook is hiding my map from his. Well, I'm going to sign off for now and we can play. But hey, you can play too, because you should be receiving one of these in your packet at home. You should also be receiving some other practice that you can do on the concepts that we've learned today. I want to thank you so much for joining us. You've been a really great sport, and so have you, Jeffrey. The last thing I want you to do is tell someone that you love them today.
Tell someone how much you appreciate them in your life. We could all use a little more love right now. Bye, everyone. I almost forgot. We were going to find out how much juice I need to buy. Let's find out. There's one glass. Two glasses. Three glasses. Four glasses. Five glasses. And six glasses. Hmm. So, if I have a glass every single day, and I want enough for two weeks, six, twelve, that doesn't quite take me to fourteen, I'm gonna need to buy three bottles. Well, I better head off and get three bottles of cranberry juice. Bye, everyone.